Okay, so let's get into some examples graphing uh, the other four trig functions. So um, I'm only going to do um, one example involving cosecant or secant um, because you guys in the last lesson should be pretty familiar with uh, sketching the graphs of sine and cosine, which you need to graph these functions here. So uh, if we want to sketch the graph of negative 2 times the secant of 4x, uh, we want to start by graphing or dotting in the graph of y is equal to negative 2 times the cosine of 4x, which we went over in the last lesson. So the amplitude for this uh, is going to be 2. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 4. So that becomes pi over 2. And then we are going to multiply that by 1 fourth to get pi over 8. So that's going to be our incremental change in the x direction as well as our scale in the x direction whenever we sketch the graph. And again, this is as complicated as I'm going to get with the secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent graphs. We're not going to worry about um, like phase shifts when we shift horizontally or shift vertically with these functions. We're not going to do that uh, with these functions. Only with the sine and cosine functions will I do that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and make myself the XY table. So we have the five entries uh, for that. Uh, we're going to start at zero. We're going to finish at where the period is, which is pi over two. And then our incremental change in the X direction is going to be pi over eight. So zero plus pi over eight is pi over eight. Pi over eight plus pi over eight is two pi over eight, which is pi over four plus pi over 8 is 3 pi over 8, plus pi over 8 is 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. Uh, and then our acronym for cosine is maximum intercept, minimum intercept, maximum. But because we're multiplying the cosine function out front by a negative factor, uh, that's going to reflect the graph about the x-axis, which is going to switch the minimums and maximums. So this becomes minimum, intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum. Okay, so once we have that acronym, we can use that and the amplitude to get the y-coordinates at each of those five table entries. Okay, so if the amplitude is 2, the minimum is going to be negative 2. So that's going to be the first and last entries. The maximum is going to be positive 2 and the intercepts are going to make the second and fourth entry zero. So once we have that, uh, we can go ahead and sketch the graph here. Again, we wanna sketch two periods of the graph. Okay, so we're going to take our table and then we're going to dot plot those points and then dot in the graph of negative 2 times the cosine of 4x. So we have the point at uh, 0, negative 2, pi over 8, 0, pi over 4, 2, 3 pi over 8, 0, and pi over 2, negative 2. And then we're going to follow that same pattern to the left of the y-axis like so. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and dot that graph in. And then once we have that graph dotted in, we go to the x-intercepts for the cosine function. We're going to draw vertical asymptotes at those values. And then we're going to go to the minimums and maximums on the graph of cosine. Where that graph has a minimum, the graph is going to open downward. Where it has a maximum, the graph is going to open upward. Okay, so that graph in black right there is the graph of the secant function. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the graph. And again, if we were to graph cosecant, it would look exactly the same, except we would use the graph of sine to start with. Okay, so um, 
All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next function. So we're gonna graph y is equal to negative two times the tangent of pi x. Um, okay, so the graph of tangent and cotangent, they're not gonna have an amplitude, uh, but we do wanna calculate the period of these graphs. And the period here is going to be different because with the other four trig functions, sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant, uh, the periods of those functions are all two pi. So for those functions, like we would take two pi and divide it by b to determine the period of that particular graph. Because the period of tangent and cotangent is pi, um, we're gonna take pi and divide it by b, which is the coefficient out in front of x, which in this case is also pi. So pi divided by pi makes the period of that function one. Okay, now this is also gonna be different for the graph of tangent and cotangent. With the graphs of the other four trig functions, we took the period and multiplied by one fourth to get our incremental change in the x direction with the tangent and cotangent function, we're gonna take the period and multiply it by one half. So that's gonna give us our incremental change or our scale in the x direction. So one times one half is one half. We actually have a lot less work to do when sketching the graphs of tangent and cotangent functions. So um, we're just gonna scale this out here. So that's one half, one, three halves, and two. Um, and then our acronym for tangent is intercept, vertical asymptote, intercept, vertical asymptote. And typically, tangent is an increasing function. But since we're multiplying out front by negative two, that's doing two things to the function. First off, multiplying out front by two is vertically stretching the graph, which in this case is gonna make the graph like a little bit narrower, but I'm not gonna like hold you accountable for that because we're not actually plotting points here. Um, and then multiplying out front of the function by a factor of negative one, that's going to reflect the graph about the x-axis. So if we're taking an increasing function and reflecting it about the x-axis, that's going to make that function decreasing instead. Okay, so starting at zero, we have an intercept, then a vertical asymptote, an intercept, and then a vertical asymptote, and then I'm just gonna add another intercept. If the function is decreasing, then the graph of that is going to look like this. Okay, so that is two periods of that graph. You have like a half of a period between zero and one half, a full period between one half and three halves, and then another half period between three halves and two. Okay, so that's pretty simple. A lot less work graphing tangent and cotangent than you had to do with the other four trig functions. Okay, so I want you to use that same process to graph y is equal to the cotangent of pi over four times x. Uh, and then pause the video whenever you're done. Um, you can go ahead and turn the video back on to see how you did. Okay, so if we're gonna graph y is equal to the cotangent of pi over four times x, again, first thing we wanna do is calculate the period, which is gonna be pi divided by the coefficient in front of x, pi over four, when we multiply the top and bottom by four, you get four pi divided by pi, which is four. And then we're gonna take that period and multiply by one half. That's gonna give us our incremental change or our scale in the x direction, which is going to be two. And then we're going to use our acronym for cotangent. So our acronym for cotangent is vertical asymptote, intercept, vertical asymptote, and intercept. And we know that the, co the cotangent function is a decreasing function.
Okay, so we can use that to draw a quick sketch. So our scale in the x direction is going to be 2. So that'll be 2, 4, 6, and 8. And then we know starting at 0, we have a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. Then an intercept at 2, a vertical asymptote at 4, an intercept at 6, and then a vertical asymptote at 8. And then our graph is a decreasing function, so we're just going to make the graph here decreasing like so. Okay, so that right there gives us two periods for the graph of the cotangent function. All right, so that's it. That wraps up this lesson. Uh, next lesson we'll get into next week uh, is going to deal with uh, inverse functions, which I, th which I think is the most complicated uh, topic in this particular unit. So I uh, hope you guys are well. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.